Okay, so we're talking about evolution. Go to Genesis chapter 2, please. Genesis chapter 2. Let's cover evolution once more. So one of the supposed evidences of evolution is what they call fossil evidences. So however way the skull is formed, kind of like this, I guess. Yeah, right there. Not too bad, right? Not too bad right there. Not too bad right there. <laughs> like that? <laughs> We're with you. Amen, brother. I'm not a heretic just for drawing something wrong. <laughs> so in their fossil evidences, they see something where this supposedly proves that men evolved from monkeys, from apes. So thus they have a thing called hominids, or to speak in more plainer language, ape men, ape men. So in other words, between man and ape, as millions of years pass by, the ape slowly transition, slowly evolved into what we are today as men. But in order to prove, see this middle right here, of this transition, because monkeys are monkeys. There's no denying to that. And men are men. There's no denying to that. There's no such thing as a neuter it in between. But unfortunately, in today's society, we get so many people who want to put more neuter it and more identities That's in between. Right. Yeah. But anyways, uh, aside from that, let's get back to the scientific fact. Scientific fact. Science teaches monkeys are monkeys, men are men. But they're going to claim science also teaches there's something in between here. And their evidence for that is the fossils, the supposed fossils. Because when you look at this fossils, you can tell this, this does not look like a guy, <laughs> let alone a monkey. Amen. This is somewhere in between a monkey and a man, a monkey and a man. So this is their evidence for evolution because there are fossil evidences. Now, you know how you debunk fossil evidence very easily? You know why it's easily debunked? Because if you think about it, let's use common sense first. One is common sense. Millions of years, right? Millions and millions of years ago has passed. If you had millions passing by, there should have been a lot of fossils developing. A lot of beings or ape men or neuterites, whatever you want to call it, hominids, a lot of them would have died. So you should have picked up tons of these fossils, and that would have been easy. Then you would have proven scientifically that evolution is true. But thus, that's why they have a thing called missing link. This is infamously called missing link. In other words, the link between men and ape is missing. So what I'm teaching here is a dummy version of evolution. That's what I'm doing in this video. That way you all can understand why evolution is foolish if I'm giving even in more simple language. Simple language. So if I have my critics out there criticizing me, some atheist troll out there, and some other evolution trolls out there like they've been doing, you understand, and they will always critique, you know, oh, they don't know much. They're speaking in such simple language, simple language. The reason why is because they want to hide it through abstract scientific on, terminology right so that the dumb person won't be able to catch on. And trust me, the atheist himself or herself doesn't understand the abstract scientific terminologies too. Trust me, they don't. They pretend they do. But anyways, let's go back to the point here. Missing link, thus many is missing. Now, that's why here's the funny thing. The funny thing is their fossil evidence doesn't amount more, now I'm being, I'm not being exaggerated right here. It doesn't amount more than a trash can, a garbage can full. <laughs> Your outside garbage can, the fossil evidence doesn't amount to more than that. And I'm not joking either, I'm being serious. If you put all the fossils inside this garbage can, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fill it to the brim and overflow. That's good. That's how big it is. And you know what? Uh, the evidence is in bones of contention. Look up that book. That's not written by an amateur right there. This is literal cases of fossils and paleontologists. Paleontologists are people who study the fossils. So this is actual cases. There are paleontologists who don't believe in fossil evidences. You got to understand that fact. Now, that's just common sense. That should easily debunk it. 
Now, their excuse is, well, because there were millions of years passing by, that's why these fossils don't exist. So these fossils are very rare, how he found it. You have to understand that fact. Well, if they want to argue that way, they got to understand this, is that if you look up at all their fossil record, so tell them this, okay, then let's take the evidences that you have, your fossils. And then here comes the lawyer. He takes in a garbage can full, and people are like wondering, what is this? And he dumps a garbage can on the table, and it just, and then the fossil evidences are not that much, just a small amount. But then we have to test the evidence. We got to give them that much. So let's test the evidence if it's real. Didn't you know that in all cases, and I mean this, in all cases of fossil evidences, you've got to understand that they always turned out to either be monkeys, humans, a pig, a donkey, or even a hoax. Yeah. And I kid you not, if you think I'm joking, you haven't looked up all these bones, did you? These fossils? Are you just taking by faith what your paleontologist professor said? Yeah. This shows evolution is not science then, it's what? Religion. 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 Faith. Science is something you have to observe yourself and actually experiment yourself. So why don't you take those bones and actually do your research yourself? And if you look up the names of all these fossils, you'll find out there are infamous frauds, frauds and stories behind it where it turned out to not be true. Now, I'm just going to give you a couple of them as proof. Piltdown Man was actually a human skull and an ape jaw. Didn't you know that? A human skull and an ape jaw. <clears throat> Today's paleontologists now know this is an intentional hoax after being fooled for 45 years. <laughs> and they wrote over 500 books on it. And they dated it to 500,000 years old. I, I attended evolution class. They all admit it's a hoax now. Uh -huh. But see, they already wrote uh, 500 books on it. And then your atheist friends are saying, it's science, it's science. Yeah. <laughs> See, they just took it by faith. It shows them. It shows they took it by faith. This is written by Howell F. Clark, Early Man, pages 24 to 25. The fossil of Nebraska Man. So now let's cover Nebraska Man. It belonged to a tooth from a jawbone of a wild pig. <laughs> That's not even close to ape man right there. That's proven at, by G. Bergman at, Northway, uh, at Northwest State College. And uh, I also have the link right here. It's at www.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov slash P-U-B-M-E-D slash 17115737, uh, 5373. All right, now look that up. See, I, I, gave, you, I, I gave you exact details. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Orc man, third fossil right here. Orc man, ha hailed to be the oldest human fossil long time ago. Turned out to be a four month old donkey. <laughs> Article, skull fragment may not be human by the Knoxville's New Sentinel, 1983. Here's another one. Neanderthal man, his first fossil had a bowed appearance of an ape and a skeleton of a man. So, oh, this proves it's a unique thing. So this must be an ape man. They later found out it was an old man suffering rickets that his legs bowed. <laughs> so you gotta understand this. A lot of this deformity is deformities within monkeys and within humans, you gotta understand. That's why they might see a larger forehead structure or something like that. Have they ever used common sense to think about that? That's another common sense thing to think about. In fact, the, uh, the oldest fossil, but now I've heard that they found another chimpanzee or fossil, but not chimpanzee, they obviously don't believe it's a chimpanzee, but another hominid fossil, they found another hominid fossil that's supposedly older than Lucy. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I do know this. Lucy is hailed as their number one evidence of fossil evidence. It's Lucy. So the thing is this, is that one, there were some people who study the bones of Lucy, and they found it to be a monkey who is suffering some form of deformity. Yeah. See? So it, it always comes down to that fact. But let's even assume, okay? Let's even assume that it has nothing to do with deform, uh, any kind of illness or deficiencies that Lucy went through. 
Albert W. Mellert, he's, he used to be an evolutionist, didn't you know that? So he knows evolution. And he's a paleoanthropology researcher. He analyzed every bone of Lucy, the best fossil evidence for hominoids, and concluded it to be a species of a monkey. That's what he concluded. Quote, the evidence given makes it overwhelmingly likely that Lucy was no more than a variety of pygmy chimpanzee and walked the same way, awkwardly upright on occasions, but mostly quadrupedal. The evidence for the alleged transformation from ape to man is extremely unconvincing. The quote is by Lucy Evolution Solitary Claim for Ape Man by the CRS Quarterly, Volume 22, Number 3, page 145. Now, let me give you the best evidence against all this. And it's actually very simple. You won't believe this, how simple it is. Now, I'm not sure if I'm kind of off camera right here. You're good, okay, thank you. So here's the thing. You know what the most easy way to debunk this is? This is so easy. You don't even have to go through all these sources. You don't even have to study every bone. You know, all you have to say is this. How do you not know? Let's assume this is unique. There is no doubt it's some kind of thing in between, all right? Something very different. How do you not know it's some kind of unique species that went extinct? There you go. Pro <laughs> yeah, there is no proof. So how do, you, how do they not know it's some kind of unique species? of a monkey or some kind of creature back then, but it went extinct. There you go right there. That utterly disproves evolution out of the water. It's because of this kind of common sense thinking that they could have thought of, but they just never had the time to sit down and think about that. That's right. Now, what does Genesis chapter 2 say? Well, I'll show you how man was created. It, didn't, it wasn't created through millions of years of evolution. It was boom like that. He didn't go through a transformation from monkey. Genesis 2, we'll read verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So notice right here, it had nothing to do with the process of going through millions of years or going through stages of monkeyhood, monkeyhood or something like that. It, he automatically became a man by the breath and the hand of God. Amen.